in uh, this manoj from plot uh, today's session is about ondc odr in ondc a very important topic uh, i have rajesh with me here uh, who is uh, representing kader uh, so uh, he's going to he's an expert actually in ond odr i am just you know uh, here to facilitate uh, this discussion so rajesh welcome to this session uh, you know very excited to have you here a uh, very important topic uh, uh, in ondc you know we talk about trust in ondc we talk about how you know uh, how ondc will handle grievances you know um, and how it can actually help get trust of the customer so that people can buy and also trust of the seller so that they can sell right uh, both are equally important and uh, and issue and grievance management and we have talked about igm in our previous sessions you know what is igm how how what is ondc how ondc has uh, you know created the spec igm spec a framework so that you know any issue which comes from a buyer or a seller can be resolved in a very seamless and scalable way right uh, so we have talked about igm in the previous session this session is Uh, is actually getting deeper into IGM framework and talk about the ODR aspect of IGM, which is basically uh, 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 you know how uh, some uh, issue, how, a, a journey of that issue, and how to ensure that that issue gets closed in a fair manner, uh, you know, uh, through through an ODR framework. So basically, that's that's the session is all about. Uh, you know, very excited to have you all here. um and and join this session um a very important session in my view i uh, you know i uh, i i'm also expecting rahul ahanda from you know uh, ondc to also join um, unfortunately i think he's having some some issue that is and but uh, uh, i think he'll join uh, you know in the middle of session uh, you know as soon as those issues are solved but i'll kick start it uh, uh, you know at my end uh, rajesh i would want you to you know take us through the journey of odr i'll take five minutes of 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 the time just to set the context uh, so that you know we are able to understand what we're talking about and then you know would hand over to you to take us through what odr is kind of stuff uh, so i've talked about this in my previous webinars is a triangle of trust that i call it has basically igm score and rsp which is rsp is for payments to ensure you get trust of the sellers that they can get receive you know we can get payments fast the score is about rating so that you can get trust for primarily for customers that i can trust this seller i can trust this product uh, and and igm is on the top of basically is is a very pivotal part of this triangle of trust is that if i have issue as a seller and buyer how will my issue will get resolved how will i ensure that i am fairly treated and not cheated anyway in the process right and so that is basically is igm which is sitting on the top odr is is is, is basically part of that igm framework that uh, that we get into right so igm as i as i, as I said you know in my previous session also it is it is about issue and grievance management to basically settle disputes and and manage you know and ensure that buyer apps and seller apps can manage disputes in the network in a very you know seamless and scalable way through apis not through you know phone calls and those kinds of through apis so that millions of queries and millions of issues can be resolved uh, in the network odr as i said is part of that uh, is it, the full form of odr is online dispute resolution ODR is not a new concept. Rajesh will tell you a lot about ODR. It is it is being used in some in other domains also outside of ONDC. So it's not something that has been created. You know, uh, you know, it's a process in IGM in ONDC, but it's not something a foreign concept, a new concept, or those kind of stuff. It is it is it is very prevalent in India, and and a lot of people are using it. Uh, uh, so it is a process to handle disputes. Uh, it is part of the IGM framework. it is to ensure that you know uh, you know disputes can be handled in a very scalable way uh, and and uh, you know very very important part of it this is to set the context of what you know where the odr fits into <clears throat> if you have if there is a issue 
uh, you know raised by a customer right let's say i am manoj gupta i buy pizza on on paytm i'll take the example so that you know um, it is useful for people to understand where this is coming from right and where it fits in so i go on paytm and buy pizza and the paytm is 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 and talks to magic pin who then talks to pay pizza hut uh, basically i'm buying a pizza from pizza hut but this i'm buying from paytm but magic pin is helping pizza hut come on the ondc network and i basically a customer is using paytm to buy pizza right so that's basically is is the example that i want to set i got pizza from pizza hut bad pizza i did not like it right so i will raise an issue with paytm and this is the level one that i am talking about this this is issue life cycle that i am talking about the issue life cycle first is that i have an issue so paytm will try to solve it with magic pin and 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 if i get my refund the issue is closed i am satisfied done if my issue is not closed then i have an option to convert my issue into a grievance as a buyer as manoj gupta as a buyer i have option to convert into grievance side that becomes a level 2 that's that's a level 2 uh, where the issue has become a grievance side that grievance l2 is where the grievance redressal officers of paytm and magic pin will talk to each other and try to resolve my issue right so that you know uh, i get a fair resolution right let's say right now it may happen that at my l2 my grievance is not settled uh, to my satisfaction right the gros the grievance redressal officers of paytm and magic pin are not able to resolve my issue right so then i have an option as a customer to convert my grievance into a dispute that this has become a dispute so this is the level 3 that i'm talking about and this is where the odr comes into picture right the level 4 is that let's say odr also doesn't solve my problem then i have uh, you know uh, option to take it to legal court so, so that's 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 outside of the is part of the igm framework but it basically goes into the courts and those kind of stuff right so this is this is how i as a customer can take my issue convert into grievance convert into dispute and convert to legal case and hopefully you know through this whole mechanisms uh, whatever you know the igm framework has given me uh as as a tool to solve my queries right my 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 issue right and and who are the stakeholder who are the resolvers in this right so and l1 the agents are trying to resolve my query right or it can also be chatbot it can also be ai driven chatbots who are trying to resolve on both sides right? but primarily it is the agents who are trying to resolve my issue the level 2 is where the gros come into picture the grievance redressal officers come into picture the level 3 is where the odrs come into picture and that's where one of the odrs that we have today is is rajneesh from you know uh, uh, is representing kader which is odr is a registered odr on on ondc so he's going to take you through the odr journey and the the resolvers in l4 are courts right so odr comes into the level 3 part uh and 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 that's and that's where you have to you know if if someone says odr okay this is level 3 and it has become a dispute right so it is basically a third party odr is a third party not the buy, magic pin and paytm in the example is a third party who is coming and saying i will set you know help you settle this dispute through a online mechanism it is a completely a digitally enabled online mechanism these are you know apart from kader they are, i i thought i'll list down others who are registered odrs on ondc as of today i i i took this you know uh, data from right from the ondc website so you can also look at it there but primarily uh, there are you know, you know uh, about seven odrs which are registered right now uh, and and you have to be part of if you want to participate as a odr in ondc you have to be part of uh, you have to you have to be registered odr right as odr uh, this is something uh, you know uh, i thought it will be important to understand you know uh, as odr you have to give the odr name what what is what you are about as odr you know about us kind of thing the url of your website the pricing model how will you charge the buyer app or the seller app for this uh, you know what is the pricing model that you have to give uh you know uh, what is your resolution success rate 
has been that also is published so that people can see 98%, 99% and, and it helps them choose. So some ODRs may be costly, but the resolution rates are higher. So I as a customer will say, okay, I'll pay two rupees extra, five rupees extra, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm just taking some numbers here, but I'll get a better, I have a higher chance of getting my resolution, right? Uh, and, and then types of cases and, 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 and what kind of provide. The primarily three, three mechanisms in ODR, conciliation, mediation, and arbitration, uh, which I think Rajneesh will talk more about it, uh, which, which basically they publish, right? And this is how, in the API, this is how uh, ODR, you know, information goes that, you know, all the details, uh, you know, what I talked about here is, is also goes in the API. Uh, this, uh, this, this is how the issue flows. I've talked about in the previous se session, so I will not talk a lot about it here. Primarily, the, the, the APIs which, which basically help raise an issue and the, and the APIs which help you to respond to the issue. And then you can get status of the issue. If you want to see, you know, if there's any status change in the issue, a resolved or open or closed or, you know, or needs more info. These are four or five statuses which is there in issue, you know, as part of the issue. So all that is there. There's a mechanism on which now one thing is that how do you choose an ODR? You know, so so as a, as as a, as Manoj Gupta, I get an option on Paytm to choose an ODR that you know uh, you know uh, 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 that you know these are the four five ODRs. So I will choose you know this is something that I I took from from uh, from a document that you know n by two plus one is what I choose. The respondent also choose n by two plus one ODRs. If there's a common ODR among those, then that gets chosen. Uh, if there are two common ODRs, uh, then the least price one gets chosen. So there's a mechanism through which so a single ODR is selected. Uh, the time period for ODR selection is 24 hours. So basically you have to come to an ODR selection uh, within 24 hours. And the ODR resolution SLA is 21 days. Uh, I, I did not talk about SLAs. I'll, let me tell you a little bit about SLAs. You know, uh, there's a there's a res, response time SLA and there's a resol resolution time SLA, which means that there's an SLA that how, you know, you have to acknowledge that I have received an issue, right? So at the level one, this is like two hours. At level level uh, two is, a, is, is basically uh, two hours again. Um, uh, and and uh, level three, uh, basically, the the uh, the the mechanism that I'm talking about is you know where you have to select is 24 hours. The resolution times are one day in level L1, four days in L2, and 21 days in L3. So 21 days is what uh, ODR you know spec allows you to resolve within 21 days. So that's that's about SLAs. I thought you know it will be useful for understand how fast my resolution will get. I'll I'll get a resolution. Uh, and then basically ODI is selected. So ODI selection is sort of not, uh, 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 you know, it is, there is some dynamic dynamism here. Uh, we know how you select ODR. So I thought I'll just, I'll just highlight that part. And uh, of course, then, the, then how do you make your seamless journey where, you know, your CRM, the, the CRM of the Paytm or Magic Pin, how does the data handshake between the ODR? You know, ODR will need some data, some evidence to, to understand, you know, whether the dispute uh, will go in which favor and those kinds of, so how that will work will, you know, the API integration between CRM, ODR, that also is very, very, very important. So I think uh, uh, so that seamlessness can happen and, and, and there's not, the cost of also resolution comes down because of all that digital enablement. Uh, so that's basically, I thought I'll just briefly tell about what ODR is. It is L3 level issue, you know, in the journey of issue. It is a dispute. It comes into a dispute category, uh, uh, you know, so where ODRs come into picture. It's the third party that you will, you know, buyer app and seller app get to mutually select uh, and, uh, and, and the SLAs around it, how fast you can do it. That's broadly from me. I'll hand over to Rajnish. I uh, would love you to share the screen, maybe you know, show a few slides and, and take us through the whole ODR. You know, uh, what can we expect uh, when we come to an ODR uh, as a buyer app and seller app? Super, thank you, Manoj. Thank you for doing these sessions as well from time to time. I've seen a few of those and they're very, very knowledgeable. Uh, thank you, yeah. Thank you. No, it, it, it is because of guys like you 
come here and share knowledge. So <laughs> thank you to you also. Yes. No, no, it's 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 just doing you know week after week, every few days, running a session. Awesome stuff. Thank you for that, and thank you uh, for inviting us as well. Uh, before I share my screen, just a couple of comments. Sure. Uh, I will take you through the journey of what ODR is and and how it has evolved over time, where it is being used now, and it is not just an ONDC construct as of now. It's it's in much many more places, but I think from an ONDC perspective, there's a lot of work which still needs to go on. I know that uh, when the ODR, so two very specific points, I think how the allocation is going to happen n by two plus one, uh, that is still work in progress. I know a number of ODR players uh, have liked it and some of them have not liked yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, APIs, et cetera, whether we are going to be on platform, off platform. Uh, so that part is still still pending. Okay. okay. But certainly it is, it, is, it is going to, ODR as a space uh, is going to change how, Indian legal system works and for ONDC it is going to provide very speedy resolution of course a user or a customer is always at the center yeah uh, and trying to move legal mountains is is what we are trying to do uh, so I'll quickly share my screen um just hold on one second please sure sure so IGM is getting rolled out uh, as we are speaking uh I think uh, very excited about uh, all of us are very excited. IGM is getting rolled out. It's an MVP minimum viable product MVP concept that you know it's primarily a bare bone structure of I IGM we are taking. Uh, but a very very important you know step forward in my view uh, uh, to ensure that yeah. that network can provide same level of customer trust or can provide you know offer same level of customer trust as a platform can provide a very very important piece in my view yeah my, my screen's visible is yes, there yes it is it is it is it cool is. so uh, good af good evening everyone thank you for joining in uh, and thank you monoj again as well my name is rajneesh daswal i'm the co-founder of of uh, carter odr carter stands for center for alternate dispute resolution excellence ODR, as Manoj said, stands for Online Dispute Resolution. I am a lawyer by training and profession. Uh, but over the last few years, I've delved into technology and how technology can make the legal profession faster and, and more interesting. Um, uh, I have a long history of working in commercial disputes. And hence, uh, the, the interest in making resolution of disputes faster. So our company name is Carter ODR. Um, you know, we are one of the first few... ODR platforms in India. I can't change my slide. Yes. So today's discussion flow is going to have three main topics. Uh, I will take you into all into my world. Uh, I'm assuming not many of you are lawyers. Uh, so uh, I will take try. Um, these are about eight slides and no longer but I will try and take you into my world of ADR and ODR. Uh, what is ODR? What are the use cases? Where is it being used currently? And then talk a little bit about the grievance redressal at ONDC and how it's going to move and how uh, Carter is participating in this. Uh, very quickly, introduction to ADR and ODR. Courts have been the main dispute format, resolution format for many, many years. Uh, India has a long history of formal courts. And when I say formal courts, it means, you know, district court and civil court and high court and things like that. It dates back to about 200 years. Uh, if I remember correctly, the first one was the High Court of Calcutta established in 1862. But there were smaller district courts wow. before, that, <laughs> before that as well. So the first High Court was in 1862. So India has a long history of a formal uh, court process. India is considered as one of the more mature uh, countries where you have a legal system where things are recorded and decisions are uh, you know are given and so you know so I've seen law books which go back as uh, almost hundred odd years and decisions given by judges about a hundred years ago. Wow. Um, however, you know there is immense backlog in the legal system. Uh, this is very well known. Uh, there are cost issues, time issues, process issues, and access issues. And four of these, each one of those, are super important. Uh, and they are linked to the backlog in the court system. You know, it is becoming increasingly expensive. And you should, you know, especially in the ONDC context and some of the disputes I handle with, uh, if you have a if you have a debt recovery of 50,000 bucks, or if you're talking about a pizza, as, as Manoj spoke about, you're not going to go and hire a lawyer and, and, and do stuff, right? It's just extremely expensive, but you still have a dispute. You didn't like your pizza. You didn't get what you wanted. You got a two-tower pizza or whatever else. Right. Uh, so there are cost issues and time taken is a lot. 
uh, everyone is aware uh, process. Uh, we still work on something known as the Civil Procedure Code of 1908. Uh, it, it is an interesting document which tells how matters uh, you know, go and how cases will be handled. And then access, courts are far away. You know, today we live, we are all on Zoom. We are all talking to each other from different parts of the country. Uh, but courts are still physical halls and courts and rooms. And for people far off, they're not easily accessible. On your screen, you'll see, and this is a snapshot I took from the National Judicial Data Grid. We have about one crore odd civil case, only civil. I'm not counting criminal cases pending. Mm -hmm. One crore civil cases pending in India today. Wow. Out of it, 73 lakhs are more than one year old. We are almost adding five to six to seven lakhs case, civil cases every month. Wow. So, so that's that. that's where my interest, you know, as for someone like me, where my interest in in using technology to solve this process uh, comes in. And hence, on the bottom of your screen, you'll see the Messiah uh, ADR, Alternate Dispute Resolution. Uh, why is it alternate? Uh, the fundamental principles of Alternate Dispute Resolution is specialization in dispute resolution channels. So you will have specialist channels dealing with specialist things. You will have different processes to handle things. And then you're now you're no longer fighting, but you're trying to resolve. You're trying to help somebody who's got a bad pizza. You're not trying to break somebody's head and thing like that. Uh, so the idea is not to make money, but to resolve somebody's genuine grease. And so the fundamental principle of ADR are these three, specialization, different processes, uh, adversarial to resolution. And hence, if you look back at the Indian legal history, last 15, I think last 40 years, you've seen a number of these, and these are just examples. So for example, for consumer protection, we have the Consumer Protection Act. For commercial courts, uh, commercial disputes, you have commercial courts. For telecom, you have TDSAT. For competition law, you have CCI, debt recovery tribunals, motor accident, and the, you have so many. The idea behind all of them is these are specialized channels. Motor accidents deals only in motor accidents claims. A consumer court deals only in consumer courts. It has its own process and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, uh, all of these processes are fortunately, uh, these processes are still run by lawyers who've been trained on the 1908 Civil Procedure Code. So while each one of them is meant to have a shorter process, shorter time, they do are not formalistic, they are still working like courts outside court. Uh, and, and that's the challenge some of yes. us have taken from the ODR side to say online dispute resolution. Can you take away processes? Can you, can you make them simpler? Do I need to be formalistic? Does somebody who's fighting only for a pizza need to file a 30 page affidavit? Do I need to go to a notary all the time? Which all rules can you take away? Uh, and hence, uh, no, do I need to be in one place at the same time? So we've started work and this industry is about five years old in India. Um, as I said, Kader was one of the first few companies to get into this space. Uh, what are you trying to do? Uh, you're using tools to help people resolve their disputes. You use simple to complicated communication technologies, which are meant for purpose. So for example, can you, can you resolve a dispute over WhatsApp? Can a court exist over WhatsApp? The answer is yes, because all you need is a communication channel, right? Or do you want a very, very sophisticated looking Zoom room where parties are in one place and they are talking about or cutting off each other's points or submitting their documents, right? Uh, can you use telephones and smart smartphones or share document repositories, email, messaging, WhatsApp, Telegram, and so on and so forth. The crux of all of this is uh, people should not gather together in one place. You don't need to travel. So the last point I said earlier, access. Uh, can you give access to a dispute resolution or a justice system through your phone or through other mediums? Uh, do you need papers and documents? Can you just live with PDFs? PDFs have solid uh, security protocols built into them. Do you do you then need a notary? Do you need anything else? Can parties sit anywhere else and submit their documents? And then thirdly, easier processes. As I had said, uh, the CPC is this thick. <laughs> it is it is this thick. Yeah. Uh, in the end, we are all looking for dispute resolution. Can you make the process smarter? Uh, can you remove layers of jargon from all of this? So it's been an interesting journey. Um, you know, I, I've given the links and I'll share this presentation later on. Sure. Uh, if some of you are interested, please go through some of these documents. In 2021, the Niti Aayog uh, came up with the ODR roadmap for India. Uh, and this is almost about two years since the industry started. The R RBI was 
slightly earlier. They came up with ODR for digital payments. So if you're running a digital payment uh, network, uh, how will you, how will you, and if a consumer has a grievance, how will you inform the customer? How will you resolve it? Do it quickly and so on and so forth. Uh, we've had Sehmati accounts aggregator. That's another uh, new age system coming in. Uh, and again, how will you solve disputes there? And mind you, each one of these disputes are different. Uh, with the RBI, you have a, you know the ones which RBI on digital payments. I paid money via Paytm to Manoj. It did not reach him, but my account is debited. Right? It's a completely different kind of dispute. Yeah. Uh, on Sehmati accounts aggregator, you are dealing with how your information is being shared. Uh, it's a completely different, different kind of dispute. And then SEBI on 29th of March this year uh, has, has uh, given out a press release saying that for the entire securities markets, uh, disputes will be through ODR mechanisms, uh, which means investors, even in the smallest of cities, will have access to a platform uh, where they'll be able to have their disputes between themselves or between their uh, securities markets participants uh, resolved by our ODR, online dispute resolution. And again, as I said earlier, this is a completely different beast from what we saw on, on uh, Sehmati yeah. and on RBI. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so in, in crux, uh, you know, in, in, as, as an overall ODR, as, as Manoj said earlier, is a way of working. Uh, it is where legal, uh, legal professionals and technology enthusiasts uh, like me and I think our, our, our Subaya from my team is on the call as well, who's on the technology side, who are interested in solving the smallest disputes, whether it is for five bucks or 20 bucks or 100 bucks, and trying to clear this, you know, uh, the, we, 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 like, we use a fancy term for it. We call it the justice backlog, uh, the justice gap in the society. Uh, we think that as long as there is this justice gap, there will always be uh, societal issues and things will not be solved. And, and that is what ODR is all about. Uh, the Niti Aayog document of 2021 is a very, very interesting one. Uh, it is written by um, uh, uh, Justice A.K. AK Sikri. Uh, he dives into India's legal systems and all kinds of legal systems. And he said how ODR can be taken up. And, and for the four things you see on screen and, and many others, uh, Carter has been part of each one of these projects. Uh, we are already integrated with Sahimati. Uh, we are already working uh, with the working groups on the SEBI system, uh, ODR for digital payments. We are already we already have products, uh, and so on and so forth. So ONDC is a you know is a very very interesting one for us as well. It's super exciting. Uh, as I said earlier, we are in the legal tech and the justice tech space. Uh, we, it works like any other platform. There are shared and at a very basic level, there are shared document repositories and communication protocols. Uh, from a legal standpoint, we provide transparency, accessibility, and neutrality uh, for all citizens. Uh, it takes two forms, and, and you know, Manoj already spoke about those, online arbitration and mediation. I will not delve deeper into more of those, and I will take only one or two sentences. Uh, arbitration is a way where parties decide who their judge is going to be. So if Manoj and I have a dispute, uh, we can decide person X is going to be my arbitrator, and whatever decision that person X gives is binding on Manoj and me. So unless that person has committed fraud, and this is by law, unless that person has committed fraud, unless has acted completely illegally, and, and three or four other reasons, that decision is binding on Manoj and me, and the matter ends. Uh, what right. arbitration does is you don't need to go to court. You, will, you can have your private resolution, dispute resolution processes, which are binding on the parties, and hence it democratizes you don't need to rush to court. You need to find, don't need to file lengthy documents, etc. Uh, there are three main parties, which you will also see in the ONDC framework. There is a claimant, is a person who has a dispute, is a person who ordered a pizza and is not happy with it. Uh, respondent is the person against whom the dispute is made. Uh, the pizza company who created the dispute, uh, who created the pizza, the delivery person who delivered the pizza uh, could, or, or even you know, uh, you could have uh, uh, the payment gateway in between who's mucked up somewhere. Uh, that's that 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 is known as the respondent, and then the arbitrator and mediator who read the documents. They will ask questions and give a decision and assists in settlement. I did not speak about mediation first, but uh, arbitration is a process where we appoint a judge. Mediation is a process where we go to somebody and say, "Hey, you know, this is not a formal process, but can you help us arrive at a center point where I I am happy, Manoj is happy, and we've sorted our dispute out." And that's mediation. It's a softer process. And arbitration is a much more harder process. Uh, arbitration is binding mediation. Either party can walk away. 
Uh, so there are three main parties: claimant, respondent, arbitrator, and mediator, and they are the same. They play the same roles on on the tech platform as well. Uh, the parties are free to choose who the arbitrator will be. Uh, from a Carder perspective, we specialize in online arbitration based on documents. There are different types of arbitrations, or uh, different types of ODR platforms, and many of them have different taken different routes. Uh, for example. Um, uh, somebody has created a very interesting platform where you will have uh, an absolute court kind of atmosphere on a Zoom meeting like this. Um, they don't use Zoom. Uh, some folks have started transcribing. So if I, while I'm speaking, there is a bot which is transcribing the proceedings. There are uh, breakout rooms and things like that. And that's at one end of the spectrum. At the other end of spectrum is, is, is some, someone like Carter uh, who believes that all of those things add a lot of cost to services. Uh, we specialize in, in disputes which are based on documents. Uh, so, for example, in the PISA dispute, it is a traceable and document-based dispute. And when I mean document, uh, the order is placed, there is a record somewhere. What order was placed from the phone, it is logged somewhere. Uh, is, where is it logged? What are the records? Uh, what was the payment? What are the records? So, we, believe, we, we specialize in disputes which are based on these documents and electronic records. Uh, we don't have any hearings unless uh, both parties are insistent that we want to have a hearing. At that point, we'll put a we'll put a camera and you know uh, uh, we'll we'll have a hearing. Uh, evidence is uploaded as a PDF or pulled from the DB, as I said earlier. Uh, for us, evidence is digital. Uh, we want to live in the digital age, and hence communications are through WhatsApp, email, phone number, which are already you know part of systems like ONDC and things like that. Uh, we call this asynchronous dispute resolution. Uh, we typically, for very hard cases, provide a dispute resolution in 45 days or less, uh, and the dispute is binding before a court of law. Um, uh, the kind of disputes we handle are, are at the bottom in green, so we can do loan, we can do debt, credit cards, HR. Uh, we are even resolving employer-employee disputes, uh, service deficiency disputes, I bought a pizza, or I purchased a piece of software, or I asked somebody to create something for me, did not work out well, uh, breach of contracts, uh, rental, product liability, and so on and so forth. So CARD has been around for about now four years. We've, we've handled largely cases in the loan debt credit card disputes category, and HR is a new one. And again, uh, most of them are commercial. Uh, we are now, for the last few months, actively working on, on the SEBI, Sehmati, uh, and ONDC kind of scenarios where they will become part of large ecosystems. Uh, we believe that a platform like us we just works on digital records where you don't need to take evidence from a party uh, and assume someone's order, ordered a pizza. They are unlikely to come and give evidence and say, hey, I ordered a pizza. They're unlikely to get onto uh, a video camera and, and, and say things. So we will base it on documents. And we believe systems like ours are, are best suited for, for ONDC and things like that. Very quickly, uh, now delving into the topic of, of ONDC, uh, there is there was an ONDC building trust consultation paper. It's linked to the to the line below, and I'll share this. You can have a look. Uh, uh, Manoj has already taken us to level one, level two, level three. Uh, level one is to be uh, resolved by the NPs themselves. Uh, and if you know, and 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 I saw the video uh, which Plotch and Manoj uh, had done. A very interesting system already exists. Uh, so please do have a look. You can go back and 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 that resolves. Uh, the complaint at level one. Level two is GROs, uh, grievance addressal officers, which will sit on top of each app and they'll talk to each other and they'll try to resolve. And third is the ODR providers, where you will have mediation, conciliation, and arbitration. I think some of that, what's on the screen, is still being discussed on whether to include conciliation at all, but it is most likely to be mediation, arbitration, and then the matter goes co closed. Uh, one of the, the the last part on courts, um, it's 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 the view from Carter side, but I think other folks will also weigh in at some point. Uh, you may not need to go to court because an arbitral award is binding, uh, unless the award is challenged and things like that. But that's I think that is still work in progress. Um, again, it's a different same same materials as as uh, Manoj, but in a different format. Uh, level one is internal resolution attempted internally by the NP. Uh, may be offered through an automated solution, chatbot, customer service, hybrid model, 24 hours. Uh, if you're unable to solve, it goes to level two. Uh, I, I, the video link to, to Manoj's video is already there. It, it, I mean, it's a very interesting way to look at things. Uh, level two is grievance addressal officers who will sit 
Uh, and again, grievance redressal officers are coming across a number of industries. Companies are now required to have uh, grievance redressal officers, typically on the telecom and the fintech side uh, and social media. And now it's coming to other companies as well. Uh, now, GROs are meant to be folks who will have high judgment calls. Uh, they will they will be able to under so the level one is is purely uh, AI based or 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 systems and processes based uh, where a decision is given. Level two is where uh, judgments will need to be made um, uh, need to be made on who's responsible, which of the network participants is it the supplier, is it the buyer. Uh, is it the is it the uh, uh, the delivery person in between? Is it the payment gateway? Uh, and the person will need to have some level of of knowledge of systems and commerce. Uh, they must give their decision within seven days, and then escalation goes on to um, uh, ODR. Uh, I I wrote less stuff on the ODR because I said I think it's it's uh, uh, we we've, we've just got a few emails re re requesting information from us, as Manoj said on his slides. We've submitted those informations, who we are, what we do, arbitration, mediation, conciliation, et cetera. But in, in, my, in my view, uh, and I could be wrong, but I think more work still needs to be done in fleshing out the ODR uh, for ONDC specifically, and specifically on the three questions, uh, the selection, pricing, and then on-off uh, network. Uh, selections N by two plus one, we believe the pricing is going to spiral down. If pricing is the only uh, way to decide this, uh, then everybody will, you know, the service levels don't go up. So I think that will be uh, uh, an evolving discussion as it goes. But my general sense, we've already got um, um, uh, directions from ONDC to submit proposals. So it should not be long before all of these are out uh, and these set up. As Manoj said, the first level IGM, I think, is going live today, tomorrow, I think in the next Yes, few yes, it is. It is uh, so, so number two and number three also should go live. Uh, from our side, we play in the level level two and level three space. Uh, we 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 help with we have a trained pool of dispute resolution providers uh, who are able to then, as I said earlier, understand commercial disputes. Who are able to assign liability. Who are able to say X person is the one who's responsible for this mess uh, and should pay X amount of money. And this is what the grievance addressal uh, officers um, uh, should be doing. Uh, we 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 sort of specialize in providing outsourced GRO, um, essentially because of the kind of people we deal with a lot. We, we deal a lot with disputes, a number of disputes. Uh, there are a whole lot of lawyers on our platform uh, who who give decisions relating to to debt recovery or and an XYZ. And we believe that we'll be able to bring that expertise on an outsourced GRO model as well. Um, and uh, Lastly, I think that's all I wanted to say. Manoj is already covered. Uh, from a pricing perspective, which I missed adding a slide, um, uh, from a pricing perspective, generally for a debt recovery dispute of up to of up to five to ten lakhs, uh, the price range is anything between three to five thousand rupees, uh, and that's uh, essentially what what we are trying to do is run. Um, uh, have have dispute resolution professionals, people who we've onboarded, uh, who we've trained uh, to act on ODR mechanisms, and who are trained lawyers or chartered accountants and and finance folks, um, and and um, and and get them to resolve some of these disputes, which may or may not have value. Uh, so the amount of money is very very less. I had earlier spoken about the four thing: costs keep going higher and higher in litigation. ODR is largely brought down uh, litigation prices. Uh, so it's it's never going to be more than um, uh, you know four thousand to six thousand rupees for a dispute of up to ten lakhs. It may not work in the ONDC scenario, uh, and uh, but I think those those commercial models will also evolve. Uh, this is a large play. This is going to be a volume play for all of us, uh, and pricing which suits uh, this is certainly going to come across you know as the market progresses. So that's all from me. Happy to take any questions, uh, uh, and and thank you for listening patiently. No, great, Rajesh. I learned a lot, <laughs> to be very frank. It is amazing to hear you and talk about, you know, a lot of the nuances of ODR and, and how it works and those kinds of stuff. So thank you uh, for that. Uh, any questions? I think uh, I and uh, Rajesh have spoken a lot, but uh, any questions you have, we are, you know, happy to answer. Um, um, you can unmute yourself and ask or if you want to put it on the chat, that also is fine. Yeah, hi. Actually, I joined late. I just wanted to know, are we going to? Uh, I could not. I'm not able to hear you, Sh Sh Shamrendra. 
yeah this is samreen i uh, just wanted to ask i could i not see all your uh, the through the entire session so are we going to have a rerun of this session or if not can we see the videos elsewhere are posted either yeah. on youtube or some other uh, or can sure sure no no we will share the video of this so so if you missed it uh, you can definitely watch the video um that that we that will do on whatsapp channels and linkedins and we'll make sure that it comes to you yeah so don't worry about it yes yeah yeah thank you so much yeah any other question from anyone so i think nilesh is asking what are the disincentives disincentives if any fund np to escalate the issues on a higher level um i, I can quickly add sure. some and and maybe manoj you can sure, add sure. up here after i i think um, you know and, and putting my co-founder hat for a commercial entity aside uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, things in asia in india is litigation and how long it takes uh, so the whole purpose of of exercises of level 1 level 2 level 3 is to reduce disputes as much as possible and the higher you go the cost will increase your customers will be unhappy in the end you need to put users at the top so there are no disincentives as such uh, but the longer these disputes go on you need to be absolutely absolutely sure that you are right uh, and if you are right then there are the right channels to get you your your answers but uh, no direct disincentives but but you know keep your user at the center they are going to be unhappy and talking about you yeah yeah no 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 you're completely right you know although we are talking about odr the best to support odrs uh, in the network uh, to the minimal possible of course practically it's not possible uh, who will be the arbitrators between the two nps are these someone from lawyer background uh, so Shumar these are meant to be the gros uh, and um, i i would imagine they will have to have if you read the ondc uh, the the document uh, the consultation paper on uh, dispute resolution it it very clearly says they will assign the liability they will assign tell you the quantum of damages also to be payable so they will have to have some legal knowledge and and these are uh, you know completely new uh, and interesting uh, roles which are now emerging generally from a professional perspective as well okay. people who understand commerce and people who have some idea of of uh, uh, of law so it could be lawyers chartered accountants uh, people who understand the commercial world they are likely to be your grievance redressal officers yeah got it got it got it and how can other odia startups become a part of ondc and help with odia process uh, i know this uh, i actually i'm not aware of the process uh, no I, sure. so I, i think they can just directly reach out to okay. to ondc it's just on their website there is a link and you reach out Sure. um we 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 read about ondc and we immediately reached okay. out and we've been part of the process it's a very it's a very open system uh, please go ahead and or or ping me later on and i'll provide you the link where you can uh, um currently there are about six of us or maybe seven of us uh, who yeah. are who are slated to start working work should begin begin very soon but nice. but please connect with me online i'll provide you the link from where you can just write to ondc direct thank you rajnish for that thank you uh, any questions from anyone yeah just one more question manoj i think yeah. uh, uh, where can we uh, there there are so many subjects and all that and so where can we get access to all these working documents or guidelines from ondc is there a common reservoir or platform where we can get all that just for uh, as a seller yeah. or maybe yeah. for buyer yeah. and all that yeah yeah there is a there is a uh, there is actually a whole document on igm um uh, on api and the spec and how the igm framework works yeah. i i i'll share that link i, I don't know shamin are you uh, have you joined this through linkedin uh, or no no i am not i i got your uh, i have uh, created a website for ondc through you through plotch okay uh, okay so we will okay. we will send it to you or you can you can reach out to me directly at manoj at plotch.ai okay. i'll i'll provide you the link okay 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 okay, okay. okay. yeah, yeah. Thank we you also so have WhatsApp much. WhatsApp community, so where we actually post a lot of stuff. So I think I am not aware of that. I am touch with Neha. I am touch yeah. with Namrata and all that from your team. So she, so, I think uh, Namrata uh, Neha will, will be able to provide you the link for that. So you 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 should just okay. join that and you will get all the information. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
there's a there's a, a question from nilesh would the history track record of NPs with the ODR be available with the network? It might affect the decision of choosing a given NP to do the transaction with the network. Uh, Rajesh, do you have? Yes, of... yes. I mean, reviews and ratings are going to drive this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many yeah. disputes have you had? How much? How many have you escalated? And then it will work both ways for ODRs as well, right? Yeah. Uh, we you went through the list today. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about the list. So, so reviews and ratings are certainly going to be there. They're going to be publicly available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I saw that one. I, I, I thought that was a good one that, you know, the, yeah. how much resolution, you know, what's the percentage yes. resolution that each ODI has provided is going to be important metric, yeah. which people can use. So other, otherwise it just becomes a pricing thing, you know, Okay, yes, this is the lowest. I'll go with that. But you know, sometimes you know, so resolution on, rate on, the, on the SEBI side, there are other parameters being developed. In how how long did you take? Uh, does your communication work effectively? Got are it. you multilingual and things like that? Will I mean, I'm imagining all of them will start flowing because ODRs already have these capabilities of multilingual and and so on and so forth. So uh, I, that list will become longer. I think it's not just going to be pricing anymore. No, no, multilingual is a very interesting, actually. That's a very good point. You know, just because a lot of disputes may come from, you know, tier two, tier three towns and those kinds of things. English may not be the, you know, primary language. So, so multilingual, uh, do I need to write down my dispute? Can I just put it on a voice note? Uh, you know, okay, so, okay. and the, these are the questions of tech and law. These yeah, are voice note admissible. Uh, so very, very, as I said, for a legal... Yeah. And tech enthusiasts like me, this is this is good. Yeah, it's, a, it's a new new chart, a new basically in some ways you know, completely new, right? Uh, you know, we are heading. We're talking about online dispute resolution. Actually, when I first heard about ODR, I said, "Oh, it does it even work?" Was uh, you know, it's hard to imagine, but interesting yeah. uh, happening. Uh, Vivek has a question. It is an inherent responsibility of buyer application to bear the cost of the dispute addressal. So his question is, who bears the cost? I think uh, that's that's a million dollar question. We don't have an answer as yet. Yeah, we don't have um, an answer. Yes, yeah, yes. But, but I think it will be distributed between the parties um, yes. at some stage. Yeah. No, no, I completely agree. I think, I think that is a very important question. Uh, Vivek, unfortunately... Uh, the clarity is still not there, but uh, sorry, sorry. but I think uh, it, it, it was a uh, sorry for this. It was just a three part question. I think if you just scroll down, there'll be. Oh, sorry, I I no missed problem, the other no two parts. I, I clearly okay, okay. should have put it in the okay, same. Okay, okay. It is the uh, apologies. Oh, sorry, I'll skip. That's it. I have basic questions. Yeah. I understand a user creates an escalation. It's the responsibility of the buyer app to enable this. So buyer app has to enable it. So as if the if you if you are you know, saying that you are compliant with IGM. Yeah. Because today the IGM is being rolled as MVP version. So it's, the, the ODRs is not part of that. But if you're, if you're saying I'm compliant, the, the, you have to give options of ODRs, whatever the registered ODRs are. So, so because a buyer should be able to go through the whole level one, level two, level three journey on the buyer app. Yes, that's that's something is uh, very important. Got it. That was my hunch as well. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't make sense otherwise uh, yeah. for the, to somehow raise it on the seller portal. Just wanted to like hear it from the, you know, like you guys. Sure, 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 sure. No. Perfect. Uh, okay. Thanks, man. Sure, Vivek. Uh, any other questions uh, from anyone? I think we have. Rajneesh here, you can ask him any questions. Yes. Hello, um, Vishwanath here. Hi. Vishwanath. Uh, just, a, just a quick question. So, um, should ODR be appointed at a transaction level or, a, or at a uh, at a case by case basis, or can it be a? Uh, I mean, for, for this buyer app, this is this will be the ODR for always for any any case that that comes. So for this seller app, this is the ODR which will be appointing forever for any any. So I'll, I'll tell you my understanding. Um, uh, Rajesh, you can correct me if, if I'm wrong. So ODR selection is done by the buyer, who is who is the uh, complainant, who is complaining, who is raised the issue. ODI selection is done by that. As a buyer app, you have to provide all the available ODRs uh, to to basically uh, uh, to all to the buyer, right? So so it is it is not possible for me to say that as a buyer app, I will only uh, you know, 
uh, work with only one ODR and then I'll not work with other ODRs. But that that sort of takes away, in my view, the whole cons. You know, otherwise it will become that I'm uh, you know I'm I'm not giving uh, getting any option to select an ODR which may be you know least costly and which may actually work best for me. That's my understanding, Rajesh. I, I don't know if if that understanding is correct. That's right. I was just searching for the for the ONDC document, uh, which says the same thing. You're right. Yeah, yeah. It it is. Uh, that's that's my understanding also. Got it. Thank you. Uh, we have a question. Who keeps a check on the GRO? The GRO can collude with ODRs and escalate more cases to ODR. <laughs> Okay. So GRO that's... is within the NP. He's yeah. he's, he's part of your uh, uh, of the of, of the NPs. So level one, L two is L one, L two are within the NPs. They are not with yeah, ODR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but, are... but uh, Rajesh, in the context of outsourced GROs, that's I think is can be a sort of uh... yeah. But I think you know G GROs will also get evaluated at some stage, uh, okay, just yeah. like ODRs today are being told how many cases have you mediated? What is your success percentage? Uh, there will evolve uh, a, a mechanism for a GRO as well. How many did you solve by yourself? And where did you just close your eyes and pass on the case to an ODR? Yeah. Um, I think those those metrics will come in. It's not, it's, it's unlikely that they'll be able to just pass on cases. No, no, that's what I understood. Yes, yes. it makes sense, it makes sense. Any other question from anyone? We still have two, three more minutes. So Kishore has a question. Is in a Amazon seller and his scenario, is the GRO supposed to be appointed by the Amazon seller or the seller on record? So uh, Kishore, from uh, this understanding that I have that if you are an Amazon seller, uh, then seller app basically irrespective of whether it's a ISN or MSN, the seller app has to uh, you know appoint a GRO. Uh, so so um, it is the responsibility of MSN seller NP to appoint the GRO and not the seller and record. Yeah, I hope that uh, Kishore was able to answer that question. Yes. Okay, great. Hello. Am yeah. I audible? Hello. Yes, you're audible now. Yes. Yeah, uh, Kunal, Kunal Savan, this side. Uh, hi, Kunal. So, yeah, hi. So, just trying to understand I mean, some real life uh, issues which are faced by the, the sellers or the customers. So, say for example, uh, Kunal is a customer and yeah. I uh, buy a mobile phone online on ONDs, right? So, instead of mobile phone, if I get a uh, soap or a stone delivered in the packet, in the courier. Okay. So there are essentially, I mean, as per my understanding, there are three scenarios where either the seller has done some mischief or the logistic company has done some mischief or Kunal as a consumer, my, I mean, I'm only doing the mischief. I mean, uh, I mean so. Yeah, yeah. No, those scenarios happen. What you just said happens and we have heard that you know, multiple, you know, oh, this is also. I mean, uh, definitely uh, uh, this entire ONDC ecosystem is amazing and the ODR is also amazing. But then uh, the problem is there are a very small percentage of people. I mean, obviously the percentage will be very small. Uh, but then they create nuisance. Yes. It, as I said, it can be few of the sellers or few of the logistic uh, uh, elements. I will not say the company, but maybe... Uh, one of the employee of the logistic company or it can be anyone of that logistic ecosystem again that is a bigger challenge because if it's the logistic company then exactly who in the logistic company or it can be uh, any um, a few of the customers also so so just trying to understand because uh, these are all real life situations uh, so then how uh, will how what is your perspective on this situation or a similar situation this is just an example uh, which we have uh, common example, which uh, feedback which we receive from multiple merchants or uh, customers. 
to your Just perspective. Yeah. No, no, I, I think a very, definitely a very practical example. Now, I'll tell you these, these kind of situations are very tricky, right? Uh, of course, uh, uh, as all the three parties here, the logistics seller and or the customer, all three, either of these can be a culprit here, right? Now, seller cannot continue to do this because there is, a, there is definitely, if, it, if, if a lot of times it happens, then, you know, a second time is 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 good enough in my view if if, the, if it happens a second time then they, they definitely seller has doing something right so so in my view the the, the seller doing it is is uh, especially in the context of ondc where the ratings are you know you cannot just hide its rating and go to another platform and then start again kind of stuff you know the ratings move with the seller kind of stuff right so it is in my view uh, the ondc kind of uh, context the seller defaults or seller frauds um, you know will be will be minimized and will be less um, the logistics is where you know there's a high chance this can happen and uh, that's where the tempering of the package you know the way we we, we should deal with in in Krapsula example i can tell you is that whether the package was tempered right uh, so if the customer can you know can if, if they have a quick picture that the package was tempered uh, then that can give an indication somewhere the logistics is uh, is involved or the customer see customer is is uh, to put the blame on the customer is the hardest for any company you know so usually if a customer is defrauding a lot of times then, then it's easier to catch but of course they they can change multiple identities it's also difficult from that perspective so, so uh, in most of these cases, you know, you know, the platform has to sort of seed to the customer and and try to find ways. But of course, customer can also fraud uh, uh, can be the fraud. It is a practical example. I, if you ask me, it is a very complex problem. It is it is definitely a problem. One percent of the people or point one percent of the people actually create but create a twenty percent of the nuisance in the in the in everywhere. You know, so. It is a problem. Rajesh, I don't know if you have any point of view. Uh, mm -hmm. I just try to, you know, break that down and, and try to give you some flum flavor, but uh, don't have a clear cut answer if you ask me today. Yeah. No, I, I think a lot of these answers are also commercial in nature. Yeah. Uh, um, and I'll come to the sort of legal part later. Uh, commercially, calling a consumer is going to be is very, very difficult saying a consumer mm -hmm. defrauded us. Uh, but assuming that a company is absolutely sure that they shipped out the uh, a mobile phone uh, and they shipped out by X courier company. Uh, so the records you will create on the way, for example, there will be barcodes which will capture the weight, which will capture in time, out time. It will capture and there will be multiple couriers in between. Did the weight change? So all of these things is what a legal professional will look at. Uh, when did the customer raise the dispute first? Was it immediately? Was it in the first 20 hours of delivery, five hours of delivery? Did they post pictures? Did the pictures look tampered? Uh, and so on and so forth. So I think a lot of those things go from a legal decision making. Um, even today, these are all done you know, in, in your consumer courts and things like that. Uh, ODR will only make it faster. And my general sense uh, from an ODR perspective, especially on ONDC, you will have access to far greater records of a, of a good leaving a go down uh, its journey. Did it lose weight, gain weight? Did it change hands? When was it delivered? When was the first complaint logged? Uh, all of those is information which uh, somebody at an ODR platform will probably use to make a decision. But it's all, all, always going to be tough. So I, I, as you said, commercially yeah. calling a customer is, is always problematic. Yeah. But from a legal standpoint, that's how the journey will go. No, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, no, great. Uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. You know, very interesting session. I, you know, uh, ODR always fascinated me and I got a lot of understanding of ODR. I'm quite sure all of you got a, a better understanding of ODR. Of course, the ODR journey in ONDC, the IGM journey in ONDC have just started. So we are going to have a lot of learnings. It is, it is going to be interesting how a network and ODR, how the network can solve issues of customers and those kind of stuff. But fascinating things, uh, you know, uh, thank you, Rajneesh, for your time. You know, really, um, 
uh, you added a lot of value to the discussion. So uh, I want to thank you again for your time and uh, you know, hopefully you know, uh, we will do this session again and, and go deeper into real life issues that we see in, o in ONDC and talk and hash out uh, and give more clarity on how the res resolutions are coming for a lot of these critical uh, you know, cases. So thank you again and thank you all for your time. Uh, hopefully you liked it. We'll, uh, we keep doing this session on ONDC every week. So yes. keep tuned to it and uh, thank you again. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you, Manoj. Please keep doing these sessions. They are awesome. Thanks, Thank Manoj. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rajneesh. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.